today, me and Jonas are underneath the bridge, flashing and dodging skaters. All right, so what do we have in store today? Well, uh, I was thinking that we could utilize the Olympus flash a little bit. Now, how many times have you utilized an on-camera flash? Well, not too many times, because I don't like it that much. <laughs> you see, the problem is that you don't like it because you don't know how to use it. Mm, yeah, true, true. <laughs> but let's not go into that one. <laughs> All right. Today, I think we're going to talk about on what this thing actually is and why you'd want to use something mm -hmm. like this for some maybe more creative purposes. Yeah. And let's try to not use it on camera, yep. but rather than use it with a transmitter. Yeah. So what we have here is uh, Olympus FCWR transmitter, and we have an FL700 uh, WR. And what that means is that we're able to control the flash from this little unit and wirelessly trigger it when we take the photo. Mm. Now what that allows us to do is to place the flash uh, into angles and places that make it a bit more interesting and pleasing to the eye. Yeah. So today we're gonna do some uh, high-speed action. We have a friend, Lucas, who is a really good skater and we're gonna head underneath the bridge, meet Lucas and take some cool pictures of him skating. All right, should right. we jump on, jump on there? Let's jump Three, in there. Two, one. Now this is my good friend Lucas. He's not just a great guy, but a fantastic skater and he'll be giving us something interesting to photograph. So what we're doing here is Lucas is doing uh, nice looking jumps and we're gonna take a photo of him jumping first with a flash and then switch off the flash and try to stop the motion without the flash and then see what's the difference between the photos. When taking photos with a flash like this you don't use the uh, shutter speed so much for this kind of photo. You rather need to bump up the power of the flash or the aperture and the ISO of your camera. Now this is because uh, the cameras have something called maximum flash sync speed. Now that means it is the maximum shutter speed that you can use while still maintaining full flash exposure. If you would go above that, only parts of the image would be exposed. Yeah. So we're staying at the uh, maximum sync speed and going manual on the flash to get our own exposure. You can always go full auto with the flash and use the TTL function, but we wanted to go manual and use the full power of the flash and make the background really dark and light the subject with the flash. Now, this is also because the flash speed is actually faster than the sync speed of our camera, meaning that we're able to capture the subject with less motion blur than if we'd let the subject be lit by just the natural light. Mm -hmm. I think the first photo is gonna come out great, so we're gonna move on to the next one. What we wanna do is use the flash for more artistic purposes. Now, we're underneath a bridge, which gives us a fantastic possibility of creating shadows onto the actual bridge itself by putting the flash really low and lighting our subject with the flash and then having that shadow cast a figure on the wall to create an interesting composure and a more appealing image. And for the last photo, we're using a bit slower shutter speed and adjusting the flash to second curtain or slow two function, which is working so that the flash is flashing at the end of the exposure. Yeah. So this way, we're gonna get some creative uh, light streaks from the subject. Yeah, well, what that basically means is that the beginning of image is lit by the natural light, mm. giving us a really cool motion blur, but we get a sharp end result when the flash goes off at the end of the exposure. Now we're done bashing and trashing Lucas around, so let's head back to the studio and see the results. Now Jonas, if you'd had to skate like that, what would be the end result? <sighs> it would be skate and die. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bags and bones. <laughs> Bags. I'ma be in a bag with my bones. Yeah, all right. So the first photo, uh, that was just Lucas jumping over this obstacle. Uh, I like it. I like it when it's so dark and with all the leading lines, the, the backlit actor or the stunt, and he looks like he's jumping pretty high. 
yeah, he's actually jumping pretty high. Uh, it's it's not just me and the wide angle, but mm. but you know <laughs> the, the guy's amazing. Yeah. Now what we what we're doing here is we had the flash right off camera, as you were able to see in the footage. Mm. You could place the flash on a tripod or or a stand, but on this case, because we were in a hurry, yeah. I was holding the uh, the flash, and it was easier for me to move than to Janne. Yeah. move the flash around. Yeah, now there's a term for that, which is VAL. And that stands for Voice Activated Light Stand. <laughs> That's me. Now, what we did next is we just kind of went a bit closer. Um, I went even a bit lower and we were able to just kind of get a bit more height to the jump or mm -hmm. it looks like. Now that's a good tip for you. Uh, if you're doing action sports like this and you want to make it seem like somebody's kind of really jumping high, a wide angle kind of helps. Yeah. Of course, he's already, you know, it is already an impressive feed, mm. but it kind of makes it even more impressive easily with a yeah, wide angle. Yeah, it looks like he's jumping over you. Yeah. So, now let's say, see the image without the flash. Yeah. Okay. Well, we were able to capture the moment and stop him in the motion, but I still don't, it's not the same thing. It's, it's not the same thing, and there's quite a bit of grain. I mean, Olympus cameras are amazing, the ISOs are actually good, mm. but we have to go, we have to go so high to be able to stop the image. Yeah, of course. This was uh, like ISO 6400, and the one with the flash was with ISO 200. Yeah. Of course, there's a difference. Yeah. yeah. So, which one, which one of these images do you like more? Well, of course, with the flash, and it's, it's much easier to isolate the subject from the background with the flash. It is. Tell us in the comments which one you prefer. Mm. Okay. To the next one. The next one was where we were using the flash to cast a shadow yeah. on the... Now, these images I really liked. You know, getting that flash and being able to use use that whole uh, that whole roof to our advantage to get these really really cool shadows up there. Mm. Uh, that's something I was really happy with. Yeah, and in, in this part, I actually needed to flash behind the, the skater behind yeah. Lucas and quickly take my hand off before exactly. he was landing yeah. on me. So this was all teamwork. Mm -hmm. I'd say good job on that. All right. So uh, then we did the same photo again without the flash. Of course, we weren't able to cast a shadow on the ceiling because yeah. there was no light source yeah. underneath him. But we were able to capture him yeah. again mid-air. It's a nice looking photo. But it's like not the same. No. It doesn't have that dy dynamic and that contrast and that yeah. arty 1990s feel that I like. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm just nostalgic. Again, vote which one you like better. Mm. But this flash kind of photography doesn't work to every situation. You wouldn't want to take like beauty portraits. Photos of her dog with a flash. No. Never works, they freak out. Well, should you? <laughs> should you try that one? I don't know. Yeah, so now, now I handed the camera over to you and we tried something super special. Yeah. Now we adjusted the shutter speed a bit slower. It was like one tenth of a second. Yeah. And then we adjusted the camera to flash at the end of the exposure. So the first part of the exposure is lit by natural light, which comes from the outside <laughs> and the end of the photo is crisp sharp and it's exposed with the flash yeah now when lucas uh, removed his black jacket and now he's just using his white shirt you can see the motion blur that the white white is making yeah now it's a it's a cool photo it's a it's a different you're kind of getting an understanding of that of the speed that you have to you mm. have to be at to you know make this kind of a jump so it just adds adds another element to it than just uh, being a purely flash, freeze the moment mm. photo. Yeah. And again, the version without the flash, yeah, it's not so, not so good. Yeah. I mean, I think it is still cool. Actually, this is the, cool this is the only non-flash photo that we did that mm. I actually kind of like. Mm. Uh, it's still, it's cool. Uh, it's just real different. Yeah. It's, it's a totally different kind of photo. I did a black and white edit and that somehow seemed to really actually work. Yeah, I enjoyed I that one. I enjoy this one better. Yeah, you know, that's, that's mostly because of the shirts and all that. Mm. It's just a cool photo. Mm. But I think the flash, flash photography for this kind of sport is the thing yeah. that makes it unique. Yeah, it, it really draws your eye in the moment you see it. So it's a, it's a very different kind mm. of a... And they look much dramatic more. They do. <laughs> And we like drama. We like drama. <laughs> All right. So people, this is our take on the flash photography, but we want to hear your opinion on which subject would be a nice to, uh, to take photos of with the flash. So yeah. feel free to comment below and let us know. Yeah. Until next time, uh, we can't wait to hear your proposals and let's see what we cook up next. Yeah. See ya. Stay flash. <laughs>